What's going on, Spurs fans? And Spurs Nation 87. And damn it, is it good to be back? I missed all you guys. It's good to be back on here talking Spurs basketball with you. And also, I hope everyone had a good Christmas, Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year to all of you. <clears throat> so, how about our Spurs, huh? How about our Spurs? You know, we, we talked about this. I talked about this with my buddy Joe. Big shout out to Joe. Before I get, well, actually, before I get any further, shout outs. To my Spurs camp, Fan Cave Rose. To Joe Garcia. Martin Dominguez. The Spurs Phenom. And then the old school McGee. Spurs man. Big shout out to you guys. And a big shout out to my Spurs fairy. Love you. Love you my fairy. And then also big shout outs. First off to the biggest Danny Green fan. Israel Camacho, and then a big shout out also to Doris Capon, but Capon Pon Basco, sorry, uh, to Spurs Hachi Carrasco, and a big shout out to the Spurs Bad Boys and, and Girls group. And also a big shout out to five time NBA champs, man, big time hardcore Spurs fan. And then a big shout out to our to the international Spurs fans. From Japan, Taro Kotani, and then from Italy, Antonio Gospers Go Monaco, and then all the way from the Philippines, Spurs Ain't Touche, and who else am I missing? Well, when I think of the name, I'll get to it, but, and also a big shout out to all the Spurs fans all over Facebook. Thank you. Guys, for your support, you guys are the best fans ever. So mainly, at the beginning of the season, our Spurs started out a little bit rocky, okay, and it was going to happen. You know, it's and it's we talked about, and I talked about this with my buddy Joe, it's growing pains that the Spurs were going through. Because when you've got new players on your team, no matter how good that you think they are, or they, or they are, or how good people hyped them up to be, you can't expect just for them to take off and start scoring 10, 20, 30 points per game. It doesn't work that way. You, the, those players got to adjust into the into the system because they just came from they just they just got they came from another team. They they got signed. The players got signed because they. Didn't resign with the team they're with or whatever the case is. But you know what? After 15 to 20 games later, our Spurs are finally gelling as a team. <coughs> and man, they are playing outstanding basketball right now. Outstanding Spurs basketball. I mean, Aldridge is... He still has a little bit, you know, to work on with his offense. But other than that, I mean, there are some games he's had with around 20 points and 10 rebounds. So he's had a couple of double-double uh, double games. And, you know, he's not really well too well known for his defense. But especially with David West, who's also been improving this year, you know, with his scoring and his rebounding and his defense – same thing with Jonathan Simmons. Man, Jonathan Simmons, he's been playing good basketball too. Him and the big, freakish, monstrous Serbian giant center, Boban Marjanovic. Boban destroy. Boban destroy. Boban crash. <laughs> hey, that dude's been on a tear. He's been on a, a good, he's been having some good games too. And like that game that he had with the 76ers, oh my god. 
Man, that dude had one hell of a game. I mean, that dude, I mean, he was just blasting the Sixers. I mean, he literally destroyed not one, but two 76ers defenders. He dunked them both. I mean, he literally ate them for breakfast. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, the only thing that also worries me at times is that he does look at times look scared, like you know when he grabs the rebound, you know. But but I mean, look at his size, look at his height, look how freaking huge he is. He's all built with muscle. Look, I mean, he's enormous. He's he's huge. He's humongous, you know. And he's already becoming a fan favorite for the San Antonio Spurs. There's been games when he's out on the floor, and when he grabs the rebound or somebody passes in the ball, you just hear him like, "Yeah, shoot it." Shoot it! Shoot it! Get the shoot it! Shoot it! And then when he shoots it and he makes it or he dunks the ball, the crowd goes absolutely nuts. I mean, just unbelievably nuts. It is so crazy. But you know, like I said, I mean, you know, with the way our sports are playing right now, the way they're finally gelling, I mean, they're playing damn good basketball right now. They've already gotten a couple of winning streaks. They've gone on a, a five-game winning streak, a six-game winning streak, a seven-game winning streak. But, yes, there have been some losses. You know, the first loss was against OKC. You know, they they lost because, you know, they didn't really have much of a good game, but it wasn't a bad game either because they didn't let the Thunder blow them out. Second game they lost against to the Wizards, which they, then – a month over a month later, they beat the Spurs. Beat them. But the second game loss of the Wizards was because of turnovers, a little bit of poor shooting, and lack of free throws. And then they lost to the Pelicans. They lost to the Pelicans, plain and simple, because for one, they took it for granted, and they didn't really show up, so they lost. And then the other game was against, who was it? The Bulls. Look, that was a good game. There's nothing to take away from that game. The Spurs lost to the Bulls, plain and simple. But it was a good game. The Spurs did everything they could to beat the Bulls. Leonard and Aldridge were main, the, mainly the main guys in that team scoring. They were the ones doing a lot of work and trying to keep the team, you know, trying to keep them... Close with the Bulls. Then after that, the Bo the Spurs lost to the Raptors. The Raptors just, you know, they just played better. I mean, even though the Spurs kept it close, I mean, they were having the lead, and they lost lead, and they were, you know, the game was pretty much back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But, I mean, the Raptors just pulled it off at the end. You know, they just stepped it up. The, they stepped up their game a little bit. And they just outplayed the Spurs a little bit, just more. And then on, on the, in the Rock again, and then they lose to the Rockets on Christmas Day. The Spurs didn't really show to play. I mean, Christmas when it comes to the Spurs playing at Christmas, it really looks like it's not their type of game to, not their type of day to be playing because they want to be with their families, and their you know all the players want to be with their families, especially the coaches, their families, their friends, their children, their grandchildren. You know, and their children's children, and so on and so forth. But the one thing they need to have in their mind is they're at work. They're working for a paycheck. They're not working to just not do anything. They're working for a paycheck. That's what they're getting paid to do, work for their paycheck. <clears throat> but other than that, I mean... The Spurs are playing great. They're 26 and 6. They play the Timberwolves tonight. And that should be that's gonna be a good this it's gonna be a good game. And the thing is, I'm not gonna take I'm never gonna I'm not I'm never gonna take no team for granted. No matter how bad they are, whether they're the worst team, the second worst team, third worst team, whatever. You never take a team for granted. Look what happens to the Pelicans. You take a team for granted. That's when they that's when they get you. 
But other than that, I mean, what more can I say? The Spurs right now are playing like a championship team. And as for the Warriors, I'm sorry. Even with the Warriors going on, uh, what, a 23 win streak? with, And then they lose to the Bucks. <laughs> they lose to the Bucks. You know, I knew that win. When they went into the second overtime with the Celtics, I already knew they were going to lose to the Bucks the next night because their Warriors are already tired. They're tired. They got worn out. The Celtics gave them a run for their money, and they sure did. But the, there's people still hyping up the Warriors. Before, it was all LeBron this, LeBron, 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 LeBron this, LeBron that. LeBron scoring this points, LeBron grabbing this many rebounds, LeBron assisting this many times, that many times, doing this, doing that. Now, it's Steph Curry. Steph Curry scored this many points, he grabbed this many rebounds, he assisted this many times, he broke this person, this player's ankle, that player's ankle, he put the, this player's, uh, he put this player on their knees, he put that player on their knees. That's all what the NBA is about. The NBA isn't about, it's not about the teams anymore. Now it's just a popularity contest. And everyone knows it. You don't think it's, you don't think, you think I'm blind? Look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something right now, okay? The West, the NBA, All-Star Games coming up. In a few months. In February. So. Let's see who we got in the Eastern Conference. We've got. Number one, number one is LeBron James. Two is Paul George. Three is Andre Drummond. Four is Carmelo Anthony. Then Paul Gasol. Then Kevin Love. Then Bosch. Then Chris Dabbs Porzingis. From uh, the New York Knicks. Hassan White. Side. Guinness, I took a. Uh, I can't pronounce his name, but he's a. He's a Ford from Milwaukee. Then you got Jonas Valanciunas. Joaquin Noah, Paul Millsap, Marson, Marson Gord Tart, and then DeMar Carroll. And another thing that really. that I'm really scratching my head at. I mean, literally, I mean, Dwayne Wade, yes, I can understand because he's playing. He's still playing. Like a damn, you know, like he's a like he's a top guard of all time. He's still playing that way. But the other thing that scratches my head: why in the hell is Kyrie Irving number two when this dude has not done a damn thing ever since when he had when his season ended in the NBA Finals from last season? That's what I don't get. And this dude hasn't played a single game this season. He hasn't played it. He hasn't done anything. And he's number two above Kyle Lowry, Jim, Jimmy Butler, and especially John Wall, Derrick Rose. At least, even though with Derrick Rose, at least he's playing. At least he's doing something. And Kyrie Irving hasn't done nothing this season at all. And then you got DeMar DeRozan, then Jeremy Lin, Isaiah Thomas, and Nicholas Batum. What sense does that make? What sense does that make that Car Kyrie Irving is number two and he has not played a single freaking game in this season of this season? I tell I mean, I'm te I told you I'm telling y'all this Damian is nothing but a freaking popularity contest. Even and this is a joke. Even John Wall, the point guard from the Washington Wizards, even says that's a joke, and it's true. But then what? Because he's speaking his mind, you know, he's possibly going to get fined. Even for saying any comments like that. But if, oh, but if somebody from the Cavaliers said it, or someone from the Warriors said it, yeah, they, yeah, feel free to say whatever you want. We don't care. You're somebody important. You're the ones that'll get, you're the, you're the ones that'll give us our, our good, our, that will give us our ratings. You're the ones that will give us everything positive that we need in, in, in the, in the sport of basketball today. The NBA is nothing but a damn joke and nothing but a popularity contest.
And what I just read to you right now proves it. Now let's see here. From the West, we got Kobe Bryant, who's number one. But the reason why he's got so many votes is because this is his last year. This is his last and final year. Thank God. Thank God. This is his last and final year in the NBA. Then you got Kevin Durant. Then you've got Blake Griffin. Then you've got finally someone who's gonna who's finally gonna be able to be an all-star. The claw Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> then you got Draymond Green. Then Anthony Davis. Tim Duncan. Number 21. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to confuse myself. 21. Then it's DeMarcus Cousins. Then Dwight Howard. Then our newer spur. LaMarcus Aldridge, number 12. After that, it's Dirk Nowitzki. Then DeAndre Jordan, Ines Cantor, Harrison Barnes, and Kevin Garnett. <laughs> As for the guards, we've got Steph Curry, Russell Westbrook, Chris Paul, Clay Thompson, Osama bin, Osama bin Harden, James Harden. Then you've got Rajon Rondo, Andre Iguodala, Damian Lillard, Manu Ginobili, and Tony Parker. You know, at least that list makes more sense. But, again, why is Kyrie Irving number two at, of the guards? Like I said, this dude has done nothing at all this season. He hasn't played a game. He hasn't done squat for this team. And he's still... I swear, it, it's, it, is, it doesn't make any sense at all. You know, if... Do you guys first friends voting for... Let's see. Maybe Parker. Because he hasn't done nothing all year. It would make sense. Because he hasn't done nothing. Because he's been hurt. Or if some... Or, or, but you know what? Either way, Spurs, there would be fans who would still vote for him. Because he's part of the team. He's... the He is the San Antonio Spurs player. But to me, it still wouldn't make any sense. And another thing is, why would Bulls fans even vote Derrick Rose into the All-Star game as an example? Like, if he got hurt and he hadn't done nothing all year and he's still getting the higher votes and getting above everyone else, that's the same question, uh, the same uh, head-scratcher as to why Kyrie Irving is number two. It does not make no sense at all as to why this fool... This dude is on t is number two. It doesn't make no sense at all. At all. It's the most dumbest, stupidest thing I've ever seen. Most of y'all agree with me. Some of y'all are going to disagree because I'm a hater. No, it's not being a hater. It's facts. Get it straight. Get it in your head, kids. It's a fact. Why are you voting for someone into the All-Star uh, in, in, into the All Star game when they haven't done nothing all year. It doesn't make no sense at all. Come on. Learn your basketball, kids. Learn your basketball. Know your basketball before you start calling me a hater. Straight up. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to go. Uh, it was real great talking to all of you. Um, I'm sorry I haven't been on here. Like I said, you know, it's just with my personal life, you know, overnight and stuff, you know, I, and I'm just, it's, it's tough, but I'm still here and I still haven't forgot about you guys. So look for me on Facebook, Spurs Nation. Look for me on Twitter 
And on Instagram, Spurs Nation 87. Spurs Nation 87 at Twitter and Instagram. Follow me on both those pages. I will see y'all guys soon. Good. And once again, I miss you guys. Good talking Spurs basketball with y'all. And I just had to get this NBA All-Star voting off my chest just to get it off. Because it's ridiculous. So we'll talk to y'all guys soon. And until then, go Spurs! Go!